Okay, let's continue on service objects and groups. Okay, so we just covered the address objects and groups, and now it's time to talk about the service objects and groups. In this video, we're gonna see a similar approach as we did on our previous videos with the address objects and groups. In this case, what you're seeing right in front of you, it's a, a service policy to allow access from the internet, in this case from the public WAN, to our web servers sitting on the DMC. Usually those servers are going to be listening in specific ports. They can be the, the good old HTTP, HTTPS ports. We can have FTP service going to that particular server and we can also have custom ports. So we decide that application will talk using a custom port. We got to allow that on the policy going from the outside to the inside. The problem is, as you keep adding ports, in this case services, we are going to make our policy list longer and that will bring complexity into the picture. We don't want that. As we discussed on the previous video, we saw that having a complex policy table can cause a lot of issues when it comes to troubleshooting because you don't know what you're looking at. So this particular video is going to be focused in how can we shorten or make it more simplify our policy table. We want to make it more simplify so in order for us to troubleshoot in the future we have a very precise and clean policy table. We're also going to be adding TCP ports and custom UDP ports. You might have an application that talks over a specific port that is not a known port. We're going to take a look at the Palo Alto uh, common ports. On the Palo Alto by default, you're going to see a pretty fine table of custom services that are added as soon as you power up the firewall and you start configuring it. So you're going to have already provision allocated for you uh, some ports that are by default uh, set on the Palo Alto. But most of the time, those are not the only ports that you're going to be allowing from the outside. We're going to have also ports that are custom based on the application. So we decided to listen for a specific request over a custom port, a port that is not allowed. And you got to create a service object and add it onto the NAT, in this case, onto the inbound policy in order for it to be accessed from the outside. So access from the outside are enabling inbound onto the firewall. Problem is you keep adding them and it makes your table longer and bigger. We are also going to take advantage of service groups. On the service groups, you're going to have the same approach as the address. We're going to combine all those ports that are relevant to the application and put it in that particular service group. So let's get started. Let's take a look at this and it's going to be very familiar. It's, it's basically the same approach as the address objects, but we're going to add a little bit more of an understanding of how can we add those objects and use them efficiently. Again, similar to the address object video, our previous video in this section in service objects and groups, we're going to be creating service objects. So if you have custom ports, TCP 8185, or you have any custom port that there's no object for it on the Palo Alto, we're going to create those custom ports and it can be a TCP or UDP. So it depends on what type of transport it's currently listening for. If it's a UDP packet or is TCP, we're just going to have that service object based on the type of service. Also, we're going to organize those service objects into service groups, similar with the address objects. We're going to do the same thing with the service groups. So you can, so you can take a look and, and make sure that creating them, you allocate them based on the application. So create a group and organize them inside a service group. Save yourselves a headache. Please, this feature is available on the Palo Alto. It is there for you to use. Don't go crazy into adding individual ports and in policies because you're going to start seeing that policy table growing and it might be okay if you have 10, 15, 20 policies. It is not okay if you have 200 policies because then you have pages and pages of, of lines that in case there's a troubleshooting session that you need to perform or an emergency troubleshooting because something has been blocked, you're gonna spend a lot of time. So I'm trying to help you on that. Make sure that you take advantage of service objects and groups and let's make everything tidy, everything organized and everything persistent. Same with using service group. We're gonna use that service group as we talked about. We're just gonna make our policy tables shorter by organizing every single object into its own group. We're going to have, it doesn't matter the name that you add onto the, the group. It can be named based on the application. 
it can be named based on the server farm group it can be named based on whatever you want as long as you know based on your naming convention that that belongs to xyc service that's all you need to know you know that if you're logging in at 2 a.m in the morning remember the phone call you know exactly what's that for you're not trying to find or call someone at that time because you don't understand what ports are what or you don't understand this name of this so also the names are very important so it's not just creating service object it's making a name for it okay alrighty let's get started okay as we did on our previous video we're gonna click on object and we're gonna go ahead this time and we're gonna click on services we're gonna make custom port for each service that we need to allow from the outside to the DMC side so we have a NAT rule the destination NAT from anything that is public will hit our DMZ zone and from the DMZ zone it's gonna hit the specific port that we're gonna allow by creating this service object or if you want to make it more familiar a port object let's go ahead and we're gonna use the example as we had on our slide we got two server groups because now we're using address groups remember we're no longer doing we are IPs or random IPs we're doing address groups so we have e-commerce web servers and support web servers and we have a list a portal you can see on the right TCP UDP ports and plus plus we also have the default ports FTP HTTPS and HTTP on the support web servers if you can see I bet you that right at the beginning you were not able to tell and you thought that all ports were very similar they're not if you see we got just changing digits so I want you to see that if you don't apply having objects into groups it's very hard to troubleshoot because the ports might look similar and at 2 a.m. in the morning everything looks the same so make sure that you understand how to create those services how to create the service group and group them and organize that policy table properly okay let's go ahead let's do the first one 12221 TCP this is a TCP port 12221 we're gonna show this one we're gonna do the same thing for the UDP and basically the other ones are gonna be just the same let's go ahead and click add and in this case, let's call this one 12221. Obviously, it's a TCP port. Okay, source port. If, and this is remember, in TCP, we have source port, we have destination port. So we have incoming traffic and outgoing traffic. And you want the machine to talk over a specific port, or the machine by default will talk over a specific port. This will be added into the source port. In this case, because we're getting a destination NAT, so we have to allow the port inbound. In this case, we have a destination NAT. We have 12.2.2.1 open inbound on the server. So anyone from the outside is going to be able to hit 12.2.2.1 TCP by just adding this as a destination port. So we're going to go ahead and 2.2.2.1. We'll click OK. Now we got that first one. Let's go ahead and do the second one. Second one was 5.3.2.2 UDP. And this case is UDP. Again, it's destination because we want traffic inbound from the outside. They're going to hit that port because that port is listening on the server in, in the DMC. We're well, going to click OK. And we got two. OK, let me go ahead and do the other ones so we can fast forward the video. OK. OK, thanks to the magic of editing, I just made all the objects. So we made the UDP objects and also the TCP service objects and I also made the FTP object because by default the Palo Alto will not have FTP created as a service object but you can see we have two predefined services the HTTP HTTPS why is that port 80 and 443 those are very common ports you're gonna be using that in most of the policies so that's why the Palo Alto will, will bring that already predefined for you now last thing I have to do is create a service group and let's group them by relevant application so we know that everything that is inside that group belongs to that particular application and the flexibility of using service groups and service objects is that we can combine those objects and use them into in multiple groups so I, I'm not limited to using them per group I can use it multiple groups let's go ahead and do it I'm gonna go ahead and click on service groups I'm gonna click add and the first one was bound to the e-commerce web servers okay we're gonna click add and we're gonna add the ports that are relevant for our e-commerce web server destination net rule so FTP also have this common port here we also have five three to two we also have 8181 
We also have a 84, 84. And finally, let's take advantage of the service objects are by default on the PA service HTTP and also HTTPS. Now we'll basically click OK. And all right, we got our first service group. Let's go ahead and create our second service group. OK, so we got our second service object group created. One last item that I want to show you, which indeed is very cool. Say, for example, you have a group of servers that might also use this set of ports, exactly the seven ports in this group, but two extra ports. You can create the service object group, right? And add every single individual one, but you also can have a group nested onto a group. You want to see how this is done. Let's go ahead and let's make a service. This is a, just a custom service. 8787 TCP, but it also needs all the ports that are on the e-commerce website. So we created this port. Now we're going to create a service group and we're going to call that the app web servers, right? So you have a mobile application that hits those web servers on the DMC. We're going to click add. Look at that. So we mentioned that we need to have exactly the same ports that we have on our e-commerce web server, but you don't need to go ahead and create a brand new, every single individual port that is on the e-commerce web servers. You can add the e-commerce web servers, basically nesting onto a group and just add the additional port that we need for that particular web server. So let's click on e-commerce and we're just going to add that new port and we'll click OK. There you go. So now the app web server has the particular port that is only relevant for this set of servers, but it also has all the ports that belongs to the e-commerce web servers. You saw how cool it is to take advantage of that type of nesting when it comes to address objects? Policy table will definitely be shorter. Okay, so once we're done, what's left? Do you have any idea what we need to do? Once we configure anything on the Palo Alto? Yes, commit. Remember that. Always commit after making a change. If not, it's not applied. It's not effective. There you have it. Very simple, right? Make sure that you use servers, objects, and groups. Configure those policies to be very, very simple to understand, and you'll save the time and hassle of dealing with a troubleshooting issue if you need to jump in and assist in any possible issues on your firewall. Do yourself a favor and configure that and allocate all device IPs in address groups. Configure service object, add the ports for your applications. That firewall policy table looks just like picture. Everything completely organized into address objects, service object, and object groups. Okay, so we reached the end of our video. In the next video, we're going to be discussing application objects and groups. This is to understand how can the Palo Alto identify traffic based on applications. 